Over the last several years, we've seen an expansion of worker militancy in a range of countries. Uh, the new book, Southern Insurgency, The Coming of the Global Working Class, examines workers' movements in China, India, and South Africa. The book examines the ways in which workers have responded to significant forms of state repression, as well as employer repression. In India, for instance, we find uh, the presence of an abundance of workers in industrial factories that have emerged since the 1990s and into the 2000s in auto industries and beyond. This book takes a look at India and the efforts of workers themselves to seek equalization of wages. In India, where you have contract workers who make a fraction of the wages of full-time workers, what is so inspiring is that many of the full-time workers are seeking equal wages for all workers in new unions, independent workers' organizations. In a place like China, where you have a massive industrialization taking place, you have uh, the formation of a high level of militancy where strikes are ubiquitous. Now, these strikes only took place within the last five, ten years. Before this, the general vision about the Chinese working class was that they were complacent, that they weren't interested in challenging the state and the traditional unions. Today, we find a massive insurgency taking place amongst workers uh, who take over factories, who march in the streets, and who are building not just local organizations, but regional and possibly even broader organizations. What is so unique about this is that the Chinese working class is gaining power within a state that is dominated by one party and within one trade union. Uh, and the possibilities for the expansion of workers' movements in China uh, is boundless. The third example is drawn from South Africa, where 20 years after the end of apartheid, we have a system of exploitation that is remaining, uh, that while apartheid ended, uh, the formal uh, kinds of democratic exclusion of the black working class, uh, it did not change anything with respect to the rights of the black working class within their industries, within the auto industry, within the mining sector, and within the public sector. Altogether, these uh, various movements show that workers are engaging in uh, autonomous types of workers' agencies, uh, creating uh, a number of workers' councils, uh, as assemblies of workers that both the state and capital must recognize exist and must deal with even though they don't want to. In addition to that, labor unions, if they do not listen to the workers, they too are faced with potential exclusion. And so we see the beginning of fracturing taking place and it's unfolding in, in places like South Africa, China, and India that could lead to the development of a mass workers' movement in each of these countries and beyond, uh, and gives us a lot of hope for understanding the future of a powerful working class that we often don't see. Scholars and students who are interested in understanding how the working class has changed over the course of the last 20 or 30 years, I hope will be interested in reading this book which will provide examples drawn from major regions of the world where we see labor upsurge and understand that the workers' movement is in fact extremely healthy, even if it is taking on a new shape and a new form.